What's up, YouTube? Jeff back again from DopeTechDaily.com, and it is that time. It's time for Android P Developer Preview 4. This is beta number three, so this is the third developer preview, the third beta. It's now available to download if you want for your Pixel, Pixel XL, Pixel 2, Pixel 2 XL uh, via the OTA images, and I'll link them below. Also, if you're part of the beta program, you should start getting an OTA a little bit later today. Now, there are quite a few changes in the new version, so let's go ahead and run through them quickly, starting with the most important changes first. Now, you probably know that for a while now, since Android Oreo, you've had the ability to get a light or dark theme on your Pixel device using the color of your wallpaper. So you can see the wallpaper I have right here. The Pixel thinks it is obviously a light theme because it's got the white background in the app drawer. It's also got the white settings menu here up top. Now, a lot of times people have been asking for Google to give us an option to force a dark mode if we want to, and they've done exactly that. So now if you go into the display settings and you go into advanced, scroll right down here a little bit, and you'll see device theme right there. You can change it now from automatic, which is based on the wallpaper, which is what we've had as default all the time, light or dark. So I can change it to dark. And then if you go back, you'll see that now my app drawer has now turned to all dark. And also the setting shade here at the top now is also all dark. So now you can force a dark mode in the settings tray and the app drawer, which is beautiful, of course. You still don't have dark settings in the general settings menu, which is disappointing. I wish they would have done that. Don't know why they didn't decide to do that. Hopefully eventually they'll give us that option. The next thing that's probably the second biggest change is the new gesture navigation bar at the bottom. Now, in the previous version, whenever you swiped up from the home screen or in an app, you enter this menu where you can swipe through your apps. There used to be a gesture bar here at the bottom that would let you just swipe one direction to go from one app to another. This now has multi-direction. So you can see there's now one big bar there at the bottom. You can actually go both ways on the bar. So you can scroll left and right, and it doesn't just take up one side of the screen. So that's obviously really nice. It adds to the functionality of the gesture navigation. Um, another thing that you can notice here at the very bottom is the back button now looks a little bit different. Looks like a little Chevron logo instead of the arrow that we had before that was filled in. So that's also a change. Uh, unfortunately, they did keep the back button. You can't do anything cool like swiping left to go back, which was one of the things that I suggested. Otherwise, the haptic feedback when you swipe up is still there. Pretty much the gestures all work the same. They seem to be just as smooth as they were on the developer preview. Uh, three, I don't know if there's really any big differences in the smoothness. The gestures still work the same way. You can swipe here, right, to go to the previous app if you just want to go between two apps. So just like the previous version of Android where you could get back to your previous app by double tapping the recents tray. Uh, another cool thing that's happened now is uh, auto-rotate. So if you're in an app and you have auto-rotate, you want to auto-rotate the screen, if you start turning a little bit like this, it'll notice that you want to probably rotate the screen and you'll get the auto-rotate logo right there and you can go ahead and tap it and then it'll just auto-rotate the screen for you. And then once you turn it back to vertical, you'll also get the icon right there where the old recents used to be. And then you can tap that again and get back into portrait or landscape mode. So that automatically takes up the space where the recents used to be here on the navigation bar, which is kind of nice. It used to be far over to one side, which was kind of weird and awkward. Now it's in a much more convenient position uh, for using the nav bar. I do wish they had got rid of the back button or something or changed some things with the gestures, but they haven't really done much with that in this particular version. Now, the next thing is the icons in the settings tray here at the top. And actually, let me switch uh, the display back to light so you guys can see these just a little bit better as we work through them. Uh, the icons here have changed a little bit to match more with the Material 2 theme that Google's been going for throughout Android P. And you can see they've got sort of filled in icons with borders. This all tr translates through the other settings as well. So if you go over to storage, you'll see all of these new material themed icons right here along the side. Photos, videos, music, games movies and TV, files, and system. They're trying to bring the icons to be a little bit more uniform throughout the UI, and I think they've done that with this version. Uh, the next thing that I notice is within the settings for the volume slider now, if you tap on the settings, you've now also got a separate slider for call volume, which is nice, in addition to ring volume, alarm volume, and media volume, so you've got some extra choices there uh, to adjust the volume for your call. 
All right guys, so I was gonna go ahead and finish the video, but I actually noticed a couple of other quick things I wanna mention before we do go. If you're using an app that has a keyboard view and you have multiple keyboards installed, like I have Gboard and SwiftKey as well, you'll notice here in the area where the recents used to be, just like the auto-rotate comes up, you also have your keyboard icon here, so you can tap on that and actually change the keyboard. That's a really efficient use of space. Google allowing other icons would go in that space where the recents used to go. Also now, whenever you're swiping on the navigation gestures, you can swipe anywhere along the bottom to get between your apps. So if you just swipe here, anywhere along the bottom, not necessarily on the pill, you can get back and forth between the previous two apps. Also, when you're actually in this, you know, forefront here sliding through, it actually brings the app that you're interested in to plain view instead of just swiping through and going through all the apps. It actually sort of brings that one into view for you. You don't have to tap on it or anything like that, which is new in this version of the developer preview. So it seems that Google has made some functional changes to the gestures. I still don't know if they're the best, but they've definitely made some changes that are nice. And I definitely like what they're doing by using this space here where the recents used to be on the navigation bar to add some other icons that might add some functionality. So otherwise, it does bring the latest security patch as well for July. If you guys want to download it, I'll drop the links below for you if you want to flash the files. And then also you can watch out for the OTA if you have it. Appreciate you guys checking out the video. Find me at dopetechdaily.com, Google+, Instagram, and Twitter. The link's in the description. Also, find me writing at gadgethacks.com where I write about Android. Please like, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification icon so you can see future videos like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.